Welcome back everybody to another indie MMO devlog. This week I wanted to work on making the weapons and the monsters a little bit more configurable and a little bit more interesting. So I wanted to have different items and different item synergies and stuff like that build up as you path through a dungeon uh, with the eventual goal of making interesting encounters that you have with these different monsters. This week was the start of that process. Uh, so yeah, let's hop right into it. I was trying to work on making my uh, monsters a little bit more complicated in terms of the bullet patterns that they can spray out. So I wanted to make some changes. Specifically what I did was, I made it so you now have, when I define a weapon, I'll define like a weapon attack sequence. And this lets me do like multiple attacks in the same like activation of the weapon. So I'll kind of show you what I mean. But like, if you look at this, you'll kind of see that it's going to do one attack, then it's going to delay for four game ticks. And it'll do another attack, and then it'll delay for four ticks. Then it does another one and another one, kind of like that. And that lets me do attacks that are a little bit more spread out let me just show you what that looks like you can kind of see he does like four sprays now so there's a little bit more like width to it all right i have i have not yet looked at what this is going to be but uh, as you can see i made a ton of different attacks spread out by four so let's run this guy and uh, see how she does wow that is an enormous amount of spray so at least we know it kind of works. And then I have a, yeah, I'm not gonna live very long for that one. Then after it all activates, uh, it basically will activate the weapons cooldown after that. So this is kind of like whenever I activate a weapon, it's gonna go through this list and execute all of these. And then at the end of the list, it'll loop back to the actual weapons cooldown. So that's what the delay was between the shots. But I'm gonna go through and change a few more monsters and hopefully utilize this a little bit more effectively. So yeah, all right, I've been re reworking how my weapon systems were built and I ended up making all the enemies have the same weapon just cause I was recoding some stuff. But uh, that's actually like, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of cool to uh, see this crazy output of skulls happening. So I made a little bit of changes for how the weapons are set up or how I configure the weapons in the code. I wanted them to be a little bit more flexible in terms of what they shoot out. So now I can do kind of like burst shots and stuff like that. How I define it is I basically define a sequence of what's going to be shot. So for example, with the stick, I just shoot a bow. Then I shoot a bow with a delay of four. And then I shoot another bow attack with a, with a delay of four. Then I can do other stuff like for the sword, I can shoot different types of projectiles. So I'll shoot a slash, then a bow, and then a staff cast. So that kind of looks like uh, this. And I can do all sorts of different patterns with how I shoot it and different numbers of bullets as well. Yeah, and then for this bow, I just set it up so that it shoots uh, one, two, three arrows kind of in succession. So yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited about this change just because it'll make the weapons a lot more interesting and then the monster weapons will be a lot more interesting. So yeah, what's up guys? Next little update for today is I added health potions. So once you take damage now, you can have, uh, there's two different health potion types. One of them heals two, one of them heals four. I don't know if that's gonna be the eventual numbers that I'll use, but uh, I think it's a fine place to start, I guess. Um, so it's like a small one and a, and a big one. And these get dropped uh, when you fight monsters, when you kill things. It's one of the available drops now in the drop table. And then I also worked on adding equipment, modifying what the weapons do. So like just as a small example, the Mohawk right now, uh, when he has this equipped, it'll deal one extra damage if you're wielding a sword. So just to like demonstrate that, if I wield the bow, this one does one damage normally. And then I can equip the, the stick, which is a sword weapon type. So this will do two damage now. And if I switch to the top hat, which doesn't uh, add damage for swords, it'll switch back to one. So now the equipment actually matters a little bit, uh, which will hopefully make the decision making process a little bit more interesting. Small improvements along the way so yeah let's get to the next thing all right welcome back guys so uh the latest update i did was uh, i made the equipment slots finalized i moved it all over here and then when you equip stuff you can just click on it and it goes into the equipment slot i haven't figured out what i'm going to put for these bottom four or if i'm even going to have a bottom four or i might just make them like rings or something like that i'm not 100 percent sure uh, but you can basically unequip stuff and equip stuff however you want now i don't have any armors yet or rings yet and then the consumables just get consumed so this would just heal you yeah and then let me show you how the loot bag pops up so once you go kill something if I could aim and kill something, we could show you. All right, there we go. So now when you walk over this, it'll pop up to the side here. And then if you click, it just goes into your inventory. Or alternatively, you can drag those as well. So yeah, you can drag stuff over and then equip it. And then clicking in the equipment just unequips it. And it just goes into the very first slot that it finds in your inventory. And uh, yeah, that's how that works. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I guess now I will probably just spend some time and come up with a lot of different item types to uh, make the game a little bit more interesting. I also need to come up with some way of displaying the current stats you have based off of your weapons. And I might just throw that like 
right above here, like how much damage you do, what's your fire rate, maybe other little add-ons that you have based on what you have equipped. I'll probably just have like a little uh, display panel up here or something like that. I'm not sure where I'll put it yet, but I'll put it somewhere, probably on the right side though, just because everything seems to end up here anyways. So uh, as I was mentioning, I've basically been working on adding in a bunch of different items. So I went ahead and downloaded an asset pack actually and got a bunch of different uh, ring looking things. And then I've changed one of them to actually do a little bit of a stat modifier. So this one increases your vitality by two, which will give you two extra health bricks. Sorry, that was my cat that just jumped down from a chair. So <laughs> anyway, so uh, once you click this, basically it just increases your max health by two. I'll probably change it so that if your health was already full, it'll also give you health back. Like it'll give you full health as well. But uh, yeah, that's basically how it works. So I'll work on continuing to add different abilities to each of these rings. And yeah, we're making good progress here. I'm liking this. I added two more ring types. One of them adds a certain amount of percent percentage for you to do critical damage uh, which basically will just double the damage that you would have already have done and then I added, added another one which adds a lifesteal chance based on hitting things uh it does work in the game i cranked up the percentage to like 50 percent just uh for testing purposes so you see i got my health back i take some damage i hit him a bunch of times and then every so often I'll, I'll get health back and then let's add the critical one so then it normally does one damage but now it'll do two every so often so you see the two is popping up and uh yeah so those seem to work right now it's not very obvious though what's happening so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to make the damage numbers pop up gold if it's a crit and then maybe for the lifesteal I'll have like a little particle effect if a lifesteal event happens it'll just spawn some green particles or something that'll come back to the player and then like fade out or something like that so let's do that next I forgot to mention I added one other ring type which basically just adds in an extra projectile to be spawned I think it was this one yeah so if you equip this one it'll basically spawn an extra projectile so normally you'd shoot just one bullet this one now shoots two and then if you unequip it it switches back to just shooting one so uh, that was just one of the ring I ideas that I had so I'll keep on uh, adding these new ones but I think we need to add the damage number changes for the lifesteal and the crit so we'll do that next all right welcome back so I finished adding the uh, effects for the two new rings that we have let's just show you what those looks like so with the lifesteal ring uh, showing right now I'm gonna see it just like spawn some uh, green particles that pop up uh, like so and then those kind of just like float towards your character just to show that like you're getting some life steal back and then uh, for the critical chance it'll start spawning gold numbers to indicate that you did cr a crit damage attack and uh, yeah that's how those will be I don't know what I'll do next but uh, I might work on some more items I need to add some different armor types uh, but I haven't done that yet so there's still a lot to do I'll think of something I'm sure so I made a little bit of uh, UI changes so now when you hover over an item it'll show a little bit of data about about that item so like plus two health plus four health so like health pots and this one gives you 10 percent dodge i have it cranked up all the way to 100 percent right now so basically i won't ever take damage kind of cool to sit there and uh see a bunch of damage pop up that wasn't actual damage welcome back guys i've been working on adding uh projectile bouncing as you can see there's a few situations where it gets caught up usually when it hits a corner of like a tile it doesn't know how to resolve that collision yet so i think i'm going to change how the code works right now what it does is it checks to see if it's further in the x direction of the tile it hits and if it is then it it flips its x velocity else if the y direction is further away then it flips the y velocity so i think that doesn't really work for corners that well which is why you're seeing that weird internal bouncing happen so i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do two velocity flips move it and then check to see if a collision still happens and if it does then i'll just stick with the one where the collision doesn't happen and if both of them fail i'm just probably going to terminate the projectile and make it not bounce so let's give that a shot and see how it works i got the bouncing working it's a lot better now there's a few situations where it still destroys the projectile like if you shoot exactly in the corner i don't think that that's common enough for it to really matter all that much i mean if you're offset just a little bit it'll actually pop out like that so i think that that's fine and then shooting at these corners it kind of decides one way or the other depending on how far over you are i think what i could do is if both bounces are valid i can just kind of pick a random direction kind of like that detects that it's a corner and i could just pick a random direction and bounce off that one i don't think i'll add that right now but i could add that in the future i think and then like if you go in a little room like this you can do like crazy little bounces so I do need to rotate the projectiles still because they need to rotate along with the velocity that they're following. That's what they should do. The arrows should. So when they bounce off, they should flip directions as well. Other than that, it's looking pretty good. And then just for fun, I uh, cranked up the bounce a lot just to make the projectiles like bounce basically forever. The projectiles will now last 100 seconds and they have like a thousand bounces. We'll just see how this uh, turns out. We'll just get to spawn as many as we can.
All right, what's up guys? Uh, welcome back. I uh, went ahead and added some different armor types. Some of them I didn't finish, so I just put like looks nice. They don't reskin your character yet. Eventually I will add that, but uh, for now I'm mostly just testing out gameplay stuff. So what you look like doesn't matter too much. I'll probably do the same thing I do with hats where uh, the hat just gets placed on top of your character. Uh, let's just walk through this really quickly. Uh, I made a cloth armor, which gives you 5% guard. Guard basically is like a percent chance to not to negate all damage. Then this one slows on your movement speed a little bit, but gives you a little bit more guard percentage. Then this one slows you down a lot more and it uh, gives you a lot more guard though. You can kind of see how the movement changes as I switch between these. Um, then these ones are mostly uh, like archery vests, like they scale better with archery. Like this one gives you plus two projectiles if you're shooting a bow. Uh, this one gives you more critical chance and some guard. And then this one's just a 20% cooldown reduction. This one makes your bullets or your projectiles shoot a little bit further. So as you can see, they are going off the screen, which is good. I think it'll pair well with the ring that bounces off of walls. So you can maybe do like bounce shots and stuff like that. That's kind of the objective. And then this one uh, just gives you plus two more projectiles and so now it shoots three. So they're a little bit basic right now. Eventually I'll add more interesting types of synergies between between items but I'm happy that I have at least something to put into every single slot now I decided the next thing that I want to add is uh, like a green number pop up when you heal because it wasn't really obvious that you were healing at all so I think what I'm going to do is hijack the damage number system so instead of uh, showing like a red a number I'm going to show a green number so I'm just having an if check in there to see if the damage is negative if the damage is negative I'll make it a green uh, pop up and make it positive so let's do that next well we'll see one heal happen here I hope um, but I haven't seen this yet, but uh, yeah, let's click this and see if we have a green one pop up. Look at that. That's good. I might add a plus sign next to the text just so that it's a little bit more obvious so that you're actually being healed. All right, let's see what the heal looks like now. That looks pretty good. Now that I've added like a lot of different item types, I wanted to make it so that you can drop items on the ground. Currently, the only way to do that is to walk over an existing loot bag and just drag it into the loot bag and drop it that way. Otherwise, if you're not standing over a loot bag, it's just literally impossible. Like you can drag and drop wherever you want, but it won't drop it on the ground. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little UI pop up when you're dragging, a little square or something like that. That just kind of shows like a drop symbol and it'll drop it there and then it'll just drop. It'll create a loot bag on the ground on the server and then it'll kind of spawn so anybody you could come pick up the item that you dropped so that's probably how i think it's going to work right now so it kind of like uh detects that you're dragging then this little square pops up and then you can just drop on it and then it'll, what it'll eventually do is it'll create a loot bag on the ground to drop it into that way other players can just pick up the item that part's not done yet but what is done is just dragging and dropping it that's in place all i have to do now is i just have to when this action happens and the drop occurs uh, what, what i need to do is just send a message to the server that says that the player wants to drop drop one of their inventory slots and then the server can actually execute the action and drop the item that's all that's left for this little task and then we will move on to the next thing so let me work on that and then i will come back and show you how it works i just finished doing the networking portion of dropping items so now you'll see if i drag this guy drop it on the drop box then it spawns a loot bag with uh, the item that I dropped. And I can pick that up to disappear the loot bag. So yeah, that seems to work now. Um, and it's all networked and everything like that. Pretty happy with this. All right, that's all for this week. As always, an absolutely massive thank you to all the supporters on YouTube, GitHub, and Patreon. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.